I was obviously really nervous, but at this point, because I was back in the city that I did Unique on, I was just getting really excited. There wasn't a room for me. I just remember thinking, I'm not meant to be here, they've not got me on the list, they've not got me on the list. I followed a group out of Hartford with one of their student helpers because they said that they were taking people to accommodation. Like, ah, uh -huh, I have no idea what's going on. And then, then it was day one of the uh, interviews. I got up for breakfast at eight o'clock. I know that because I filmed it um, and documented everything, which has really helped this video to be planned. The breakfast that we had on offer was like a full English breakfast. They also offer that at St Peter's. I didn't actually have an interview till half past 11, but I wanted to get up so that I could actually start like reading through things. And I had to go for pre-reading 20 minutes before half 11, so 10 past. And the pre-reading was done in the library. It was basically like a text about early hand axes and that makes a lot of sense to me now because the tutor that was into me which I had absolutely no idea about and should have probably looked into he's like a specialist that's his that's his favorite area and I did his module on it in third year you're absolutely not expected to know everything you're just kind of expected to show your skills in source analysis and if you're gonna do some last minute practice practice source analysis questions so find any text you can pick out the inf the important information and try and try and make sense of it and form your own opinions and things like that like I think that's a lot more useful than a mock interview in a lot of cases actually I know it was told because we had like a pre interview meeting at like 9am I was told that it would involve artefacts, that we'd have pre-reading and then a bit on a personal statement and that was what that was all I was told. There was two people in my interview, one who I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, you are exactly what I expected an Oxford professor to look like and I can't say it was particularly inviting but he is a lovely lovely man and I have been like taught by him since and he's completely the opposite of I don't know if he's completely the opposite but he's lovely anyway and really welcoming and really nice it was just like a first impression if you if your tutor is wearing tweed and corduroy you know you get a vibe this interview was pretty savage it, do, it didn't come across in my vlog because I just had that adrenaline of afterwards like oh yeah it's done it went so well but all that I didn't think it went so well at all like I said it was savage this guy who I've just described to you I remember he held he had a lot of artifacts on the table and he was like pick three I think and I remember picking ones which I thought were obvious turns out the whole point of the exercise is that they are not obvious <laughs> there was a pot like a rim just a rim and I was like oh I think it's I think it's a pot it could be like a Roman amphora ceramics and he was like what period and I was like uh, um what period of history um Roman and he was like, no, it's Hellenistic, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Of course, sure. I'm not even sure at that point I knew what Hellenistic meant. But that's fine. Clearly didn't bother them too much. There was also, I remember one question, and I'm reading it, so just to make sure I get it right. It's, the question was, how can we learn about religion from a culture that doesn't leave documentation or depictions? and I fumbled with this question for so long it felt like forever that I was just like uh... eventually he ended up saying something like think about the living and the dead and I was like oh 
burials is what they were looking for and eventually I got there but just don't be don't be afraid to take ages they're expecting you to not you know know it's it's not to to trick you they just want to see if you eventually get there and not even if you eventually get there just how you get there because then they can sort of judge how your brain works and responds to problem solving so that interview was all together about 30 minutes i think it was probably slightly longer but it was meant to be 30 minutes long and afterwards i went for a wander because i had all afternoon free and yeah obviously i went back and did some work in the afternoon later on but straight away i just carried on in order to shut that out and just kind of chill i went to the botanic gardens and i would really really recommend just having a wander around, look at a college, say you're a prospective student, you get it for free. And also the Botanic Gardens, there's like, I think there's a concessionary prize and you just have a wander. Granted, there's not many plants in there in December, which I probably should have realised, but it was soothing and quiet and really nice. And it walk, you have to do like a little walk by the river. Yeah, I would recommend that. In the evening, our corridor and a few other people who did, I'm pretty sure chemistry, went to the Christmas markets, they're on on Broad Street. Again, I would really make a wreck of what? <laughs> the food shop is also on Broad Street and they do free samples including dairy free fudge. So yes, obviously, I had fudge. You like sugar, huh? Is there sugar and syrup? Yes. Then yes! The market was cute, I'm pretty sure there's also a clip of that in my vlog, which I am just going to link in the pinned comment for everyone wondering what I'm talking about. I I'm so young in this video and my actual video skills are poor but just I, it's in the past. <laughs> Day two started early. I had an interview at nine. Well the, the pre-reading was at nine, the actual interview was at half past but I had to be at St Hughes College for 9am and St Hughes College is like a 40 minute walk. We were taken there by some interview helpers and they waited, I think they waited for us and then asked if if we'd rather be left or waited for and I said left because I wanted to explore afterwards. But they dropped us off, they took us to the JCR, handed us over to the St Hughes interview helpers and I actually, I'm still friends with one of those interview helpers, hey Gonzalo if you're watching this. The interview helpers there was so good at kind of calming us down and just talking to us about what happens on the course and that was really nice because yes we had pre-reading but you need to be talked down I think when you're in that sort of mindset or at least I do you just just talk at me because I will just talk at you the pre-reading was about a page long I honestly couldn't tell you what it was about I do not remember this one I had two interviews at St Hughes as well. The first one was at half nine and then the next one was probably at ten. One was archaeology, one was anthropology. The archaeology one was in this weird house building thing that I've been to the tutorial since is um, the tutor's office and I had been warned that he has dogs in the interview so if I didn't like dogs to tell the interview helper to go and get him to to put them in a different room I was like no great they'll calm me down and <laughs> I remember walking in and bearing in mind the first line of my personal statement talks about Lucy who is like that's the colloquial name for the Australopithecus who was found by uh, Johansson and Leakey about so about 3.2 million years old Australopithecus afarensis and <laughs> he had a skull which like inside I knew exactly what this skull was I knew it was of the Australopithecus afarensis and I knew that I walked in I saw it I clocked it did my interview on the way out decided that I would say well, when they say if you get any questions I was like oh I saw the skull on the way in what is it kind of laughed and then like a chuckle not like a ha 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 just like chuckled and was like oh it's it's an australopithecus and I remember in my head thinking I knew that and then out loud went oh right really <laughs> and 
and then afterwards thinking, you idiot. You have said in your personal statement that you have read this book. This book has like pictures of all of the schools and you've talked specifically about this one and you just made a fool out of yourself. Like, duh. But, oh well, we still graduated. <laughs> in my second interview at St. Hughes, I also did a fumble, but I think I did quite well in that interview because they asked me a lot about sociology and I've discussed this in the recent like interview guidey video that I made, how they asked me about the sociology of childhood and to relate it to anthropology. My big fumble in this interview came when they showed me a selection of artefacts on a piece of paper. They were hand axes, or at least like this shaped stone tools and I was to describe them, suggest their uses. They were like, yeah, great. Give me the next piece with basically the same thing, but much teeny tinier. So these were microliths, which means basically like micro stone flake, teeny tiny ones. And they were like, right, what are the uses of these? If these are, you know, axes and do you know, I had no, I had nothing. I had nothing. And like I said before, this period in history is, it's, it's me, this, like, it's what I do. And yet, I, I, my brain just, it went completely blank. I could not, for the life of me, find an answer. And they were like, oh, don't worry, it's fine. They're arrowheads. And I remember just thinking, Oh my Christ. <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, that went well. That evening, because I thought I was finished, everyone else was finished. In fact, there was one other person who had another interview, but we didn't know at this point. So we were planning on going like into town to have a look around and we were gonna go to a pub, even though not all of us were 18 yet. I was clearly so high on adrenaline that that seemed like a great idea. But that's what we did anyway. We subsequently got made to leave several pubs because you have to be 18 to sit in a pub when one or more of the people there have alcohol. Some of them were 18 so they did and that we couldn't stay there. And we tried th three different pubs before we decided we should just go back to like our corridor and just chat and chill. <laughs> One person went out for a cigarette and found the board with two of our names on for a third interview. And this must have been about 9pm maybe? I'm not sure. But yeah, we found out eventually and realised that we both had interviews at like 9.30 the next morning. It was at St Peter's, both of us were at Peter's, we again had breakfast in Hartford, went to St Peter's, walked over with one of the Hartford people and the one thing I remember so vividly from St Peter's is that it was two women. That, I don't know, it just, I've so far only been greeted by older white men or at least like not even older, just men. <laughs> and now I had two women sitting in front of me. And it was almost like immediate comfort in familiar familiarity. Yeah. The fact that it was day three and I was also thinking, you know, by this point, if they hate me, they hate me. So I didn't, I didn't feel too stressed about this at all. Like it was, I'd already done it three times before it wasn't easy but it felt kind of normal and less eesh. there wasn't any pre-reading for this either we just went straight in i assume because there just wasn't enough time and they we talked about my epq we talked about my favorite area of the syllabus um so do read up on the syllabus they gave me a tray of artifacts i had to pick one talk about it and also try and find a pattern in all of them. I remember picking one up thinking that it's one of those nosegay things that you put on your wrist with a lavender in, picking it up and just like taking the biggest sniff out of this artifact. 
keep thinking, what did I just do that for? They must think I am a nutcase. When in reality, actually, I think they probably liked that because it shows like you're going a little bit deeper into it, like you're not just using your visual sense and a lot of the literature in archaeology is about breaking down that barrier of only looking, only using the visual. And so I think that did probably really help me out, despite thinking that it was a disaster at the time. And, you know, it was, that was it. And it was like just a really lovely three days with little bits of disaster thrown in. <laughs> little bits of disaster that led to this. And I hope that this little story time was, you know, interesting, insightful, enjoyable, and that it made you perhaps feel more comfortable about your upcoming interviews. So yeah, thank you for watching. Again, sorry for the lighting and also me, as I literally just got back from work. And thank you, yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed and hit that subscribe button. Bye!